And there's a lot of stuff to talk about. And unfortunately, the top story today is one of those stories I hate having to having to talk about here. Don West, the iconic pitch man who served as one of the voices of TNA Wrestling, has passed away following a battle with cancer. West's passing was announced by his former broadcast partner, Mike Tanay on Friday. Don West was 59 years old. Tanay wrote, just heard from wife Terry that our brother will be spending New Year's in heaven. Terry said D-Dub finally had to tap out from his match with lymphoma. We bonded as soon as we met, both as broadcast partners and friends. Years of great moments, both on and off camera. He announced in June... Of 2021, he had been diagnosed with brain lymphoma, went into remission after undergoing chemotherapy and radiation treatment. Cancer returned. West began a second battle with the disease last December. Part of the commentary team for TNA 2002 to 2012, worked in the company's merchandise uh, merchandise department as well. Returned in 2017 to call the Slammiversary pay-per-view. Outside of wrestling, he is best known for his time as a sports collectibles pitchman on the Shop at Home Network. West and the Shop at Home Network were even parodied on Saturday Night Live in the 90s. Radio host, he worked for News Radio 560 KPQ in the state of Washington. And Tanae shared on December 17th he got to FaceTime with West. And Tanae called it the best Christmas gift he could get. So all the best to the friends and family of uh, Don West. I loved listening to Don West in TNA. And we could talk a little bit more about that when we come back from the break. You know who Don West reminded me of in some ways? Who's that? My main man, David Crockett. <laughs> because, uh, you know, Don West started and he wasn't like a wrestling guy. He was a guy brought in. He was a hype man. And he did commentary on those early TNA shows. And a lot of people early on didn't like Don West because it was like, you know, this guy, where did he come from and, and this and that. But you know what? You know what Don West had? He had an incredible amount of passion. And man, he called those shows like he was having the time of his life. And, you know, in WWE, sometimes not so much now, but back in the day when Vince yelled at guys, you'd have uh, you'd have these commentators that they were pretending to have the time of their life. But uh, for various reasons, they probably wouldn't. And you didn't really believe that they were having the time of their lives. Or when, you know, they do some stupid comedy and then Michael Cole go, ha, 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 ha. And you're like, this guy doesn't think that's funny. He's pretending to laugh. Not for one second did you ever think that Don West was pretending to be excited. This dude was so excited. And David Crockett was the same way. A lot of people did not like David Crockett as an announcer. I love this guy. Because he called those matches. And he had so much fun. You know what he reminds me of in a different sort of way? Who? Is uh, is Tony Schiavone nowadays? You hear Tony Schiavone on commentary, and there's a guy who's just having fun, and he'll see a match that he likes, and he'll mark out for it. That's what I like in my announcers. I would like them to obviously be, you know, but you've got a you've got a team. There's a guy that should know everything about wrestling, your Excalibur, and then you've got some dude that does color. You know, sometimes you have like eight dudes in a booth or whatever. But there is a place for a Don West whose job is to be excited and make you excited for what you're watching here on this show. And man, that was Don West. And then he would do those segments where he was where he was selling merch. It was like I watch all these commercials and, you know, sometimes there'll be a raw commercial and it'll be Christmas time and, you know, the New Day's trying to hawk some merch or whatever. And it's, you know, disguised as a backstage segment, but it's, it's really selling stuff and nothing against the New Day. But, you know, that's fast forward material. I'm not going to I'm not going to buy any of this stuff. But man, Don West would get going and you just had to watch it because he would be selling you on the most preposterous stuff. Why would I want a Jeff Jarrett foam guitar? I don't. But by the time Don West was done, I kind of thought about busting out that credit card. <laughs> so, man, sad to hear Don West go. It sucks. Is everyone here on the chats noting cancer sucks? All the best to his friends and family, and sad day here. What a pro. What a pro, and what enthusiasm he had, and the charisma, just the natural selling ability that he had. I retweeted a clip of him overnight selling beanie babies and if you're of a certain age and you were up late at night 
possibly in a really, really good mood. And, and these shows would come on with him hawking stuff. You know, mostly it was sports memorabilia. But then in this case, it was Beanie Babies. It just was incredible. And he brought that same thing. And he was the perfect counterbalance to Mike Tenay, who was so dead serious. And you had this new guy, and they didn't make any bones about that. He's a new announcer. I'm here. I'm happy. Go, Red, go. Like, he was legitimately, I believe, and I believe this to be true, that he was amazed watching Amazing Red and got that excited over the stuff. And I thought he was so, so great. And, I mean, his... There's a story about his introduction or one of his introductions into the wrestling business, and I'm not sure how linked to it he was before he got going with Impact and TNA, but when they were doing the test run for announcers at Burt Prentice's Nashville show, and that's where, obviously, at the fairgrounds, that's where TNA first started, and they were doing the announcing, the test announcing in the back of the building, and Jim Cornette happened to be there, and when TNA first started... Not only was it Mike Tenay and Don West, but it was also Ed Ferrara. And so he got to see Jim Cornette and Ed Ferrara get into it with Cornette spitting in Ferrara's eye about his mockery of Jim Ross. And I always wondered, it's like, I don't know if Don West thought that was the greatest thing or the worst thing in the world, but there's your introduction into wrestling. And from there, what he did with TNA was great. I thought the heel turn, as, as goofy as it was, was perfectly timed. And I thought they really really reinvigorated him, making him a character on the show. And then that got into more of him just selling the merchandise, like Brian mentioned, which that was his natural thing. He was just great. Person says, Pat McAfee comes the closest to Don Energy. Yeah, he's he's sort of. He does. But he's, he does. he's, 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 he's no Don West, but he's, no. he's, he's closer than many. And you know who else is, and no one's going to agree with this because nobody actually watches NXT except me, Booker T., Great enthusiasm. This guy, yes. Holy smokes, he's having. I mean, fun. he's also got he's also got the wrestling aspect. So, you know, Booker T. A couple of weeks ago, they had him do a sit down interview with uh, um, what's her name, uh, Roxanne. Roxy, and and he did a great job because he actually trained her, and he was actually very emotional when she when she won the NXT title. So he was a great person to do that job. But man, this guy, you know, the first day or two that he did commentary. He uh, he was kind of subdued and everything like that, but uh, from that point forward, like this he guy sounds is... like he's smoking woolly blunts right before he goes on, and he's having the time of his life. But I he think, is having the time of his life. I think Booker and McAfee because McAfee's got a brand. He was already something coming into this, and even though his his enthusiasm is real, and I believe him, and the same thing with Booker T. I think Don West is different because. I think that there was, he never stepped out of, and even when they forced him into, you know, more of a role being adversarial to, to Mike Tenay, he was always that guy, us. He was the fan. He was the guy that got dropped into the situation. And I guess in some ways, yes, he was playing Don West while he was doing it, but he always, there was something much more approachable to him. And it was something that I really, really wished that, uh, ROH was going to get out of Mike Hogwood with Dave Parazak, and unfortunately that never ended up happening, but we did get slapped the porpoise out of it. I didn't like the hog. I, oh, I Hogwood. Oh, yeah, so he sort try. of tried. And now, well, I, well, well, no, there's stories for another day. It's this Don person West here day. says, as somebody who grew up watching those crappy TNA shows in the 2000s, Don West was so amazing, and him paired with Mike today was a great duo showing their awe and passion. There was definitely a lot of awe to be seen in those early TNA shows, let me oh, tell you. yes. Their awe and passion for pro wrestling, rest in peace, Don West. Yeah, him and Tanae were great. They were a great duo. Because they were friends. They were friends yeah. in this crazy business. And man, oh how nice was that for the longest time? You didn't have to have announcers join with each other because that became the thing. And that's one of the things I don't like about Corey Graves. I know it's in his ear to go ahead and do that, but like he's really good when he's toned down and just normal. You know, he and Paquette, when they were on together, it's like they were so normal. It was great. It was conversational. It wasn't as wacky as what, like, I mean, I love Taz and Shivani and all them, but sometimes I think maybe they're laughing sometimes a little bit too much. But, like, they, you know, they were, I guess, were too calm. So they had to fire it up. And you didn't get that with Weston Tanay for the longest time. It was just two guys calling 
a version of pro wrestling. It was going to say pro wrestling, but I mean, there was the Dups and the Johnsons and the Flying Elvises and Cheeks. Cheeks. Look that one up. Look. This person says, watching TNA as a kid, tells you how old oh. we are. Oh. Watching TNA as a kid was listening to Mike today explain all the stories and then brace yourself for Don West to scream at the top of his lungs with such enthusiasm it almost forced you to keep watching to see more. You can send your feedback to 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. I'm sure we could talk about uh, Don West all day. Just learned of Don West passing due to his show today. Don West sold me on buying so much stuff at TNA shows over the years when I was younger. For better or worse, he was the voice of TNA Wrestling, which says a lot when you have Professor Mike as the guy opposite you. And also here, Don West wasn't going to win any awards for announcing, but nobody has ever been as enthusiastic about the product than him. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Granny, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, wrestle uh, load? <laughs> and Brian Hawks. <laughs> I, I don't. That's what got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> oh wait a minute! It's wrestle Cade. Oh, oh well, that good. makes more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh! I've okay. never. I have. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.